Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 in the Jan 2022 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below, so be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. So as per usual, we'll take a read of the information before we jump into it. The following errors were discovered after the preparation of a draft income statement on 31st December 2021 in the books of Jordy Parks. Details of errors discovered. So, a credit purchase of goods for 670 from a from A to Re had been recorded at 607. Okay, so that's an error of transposition. Okay, so the second error says purchase of furniture for 5600 for use in the business had been debited to the purchaser's account. Okay, that's an error of principle. So those first two won't affect the trial balance, but this item, closing inventory, had been undervalued by 500, right? So that's just an error of, well, wrong amount, right, in one, on, in one account. So that's going to affect the trial balance, so that will require the suspense account. Now, what do they want us to do? Prepare journal entries on 31st December 2021 to correct the above errors. Narratives are not required. Okay, cool. Now, before we get into it, if you are not too familiar with error correction and the use of the general journal to correct errors, I'm going to put a card up there with a link to my error correction playlist, and I'm also going to put a link to it in the description below. It's a few videos, it's about six of them because there's a lot to go through, but I try to take my time and go through it piece by piece and not overload any one video. And there are also questions in there for you to try, just to see if you have the hang of it. So, if you want to check those out, I would advise you to do that now. If you feel comfortable and you want to check out this solution, let's go ahead. So, the first item is a credit purchase of goods for 670 from A to Re had been recorded as 607. So, you see how we mixed up the digits, the 6, 7, and 0 mixed up? That's called an error of transposition. And you can always double check because the difference will always be divisible by 9. So what do we need to do? Well, the, the figure that was actually used, 607, is lower or less than the correct figure of 670. By how much? $63. How did I get that? I simply took 670 and subtracted 607. So that means that each account, the purchases account and a 2 re both of them would be too low by $63. So what do we have to do to correct it? Well, simple. We have to go and debit purchases and credit to re for $63. Let's take a look at that across here. So we're going to see a debit to purchases and a credit to re for 63 Now, there was a folio column given to you in the format. Now, the purchases account belongs in the general ledger and a to re is a creditor because you are purchasing from a to re on credit and all creditors accounts, trade creditors at least, are found in the purchases ledger. The XX is simply, well, any random number. So you can make up any numbers you want. I don't think it matters. Now, again, we're debiting purchases because purchases is an expense. And when we incur an expense, we have to debit the expense account to record the incurrence of said expense. We're crediting TURI because if we're purchasing on credit, that means that we are owing TURI money. We, we, have, we have taken the goods, bought them, but not paid for them. They're, but we have promised to pay for them in the future. Therefore, we owe TURI money. And anytime you owe anybody money, that's a liability. And to record an increase in a liability, you have to credit the liability account. Okay, let's take a look at item B. It says, purchase of furniture for 5600 for use in the business had been debited to purchases account. So the purchases account is only used to record purchases of stock or goods or inventory. Furniture is none of those. Furniture is a non-current asset. When we purchase furniture, we're supposed to debit the furniture account. So, we debited purchases instead. So, a couple of things. One, it means we didn't debit furniture, which means to fix that error, we have to debit furniture, and we also have a debit in purchases that should not be there. To remove a debit, you actually have to counterbalance it. What does that mean? It means you go on the opposite side of the account, which is the credit side in this case, and you record a figure, the same figure, 5600, which will cause the credit side to come up and kind of cancel off, or as I say, counterbalance the incorrect debit. So again, just to recap that and to show the actual journal entries, we debit furniture and we credit purchases. Again, we're debiting furniture because furniture is an asset. If we're buying an asset, that means the amount of the asset we have is going up or increasing. And to record an increase in an asset, we have to debit. Assets increase with debits. So you're debiting furniture, 5600 And again, for the folio, I just put general ledger because furniture is an asset, and that will be recorded in the general ledger. Purchases is an expense, 
and that is also recorded in the general ledger. So you'll see GL there. And again, the XX just represents any two digits. Now you could put one digit, you could put two digits, you could put three, you could put four, doesn't matter. You could even put letters. But again, don't go too complicated. It's not overly important at this stage. Okay, let's take a look at the final error we have to correct across here, which is closing inventory had been undervalued by $500. Inventory is an asset. If it's undervalued, that means the asset balance is too low. If it's too low, we have to increase it. How do we increase an asset balance? We have to debit the asset account. So we're going to debit inventory $500. What account do we credit? Was there any other account affected by this error? No, there wasn't. Therefore, we use the suspense account to facilitate the double entry to correct this error. So that's the correction of these errors. It was with seven marks. So don't spend any more than about 10, 11 minutes on that. Now let's take a look at the next part of the question. It says JD Park's transactions for the month of, 4, of December 2021, sorry, included the following. On the 4th of December, it says bought goods on credit from Mala Limited, list price 1,000, less 20% trade discount. Now trade discount is not recorded. It's simply subtracted from whatever the list price is. And the, the net amount on the invoice is what is used to record the double entry transaction in, in the books and also in the journal. Well, double entry is not for the journal, that's for the T accounts, right? On the 12th of December, we paid the amount owing to Marla Limited by check, less 2.5% cash discount. So cash discount is recorded and it's used to encourage early repayment of debts. So what is the question asking us? State one benefit of the trade discount to Mala Limited on 4 December. All right, so the major benefit of trade discount is that it encourages customers to continue to buy from Mala because they could expect a discount. A discount will reduce the amount of custom that customers have to pay. So if customers could expect to pay less by Mala than anywhere else, they would be, well, they'll continue to come and be loyal. Another possible benefit is that it encourages customers to buy larger quantities and hence spend more money. So trade discount is also offered for what we call bulk buying. The more you buy, the bigger the discount you can get because you are taking more of the, the stock or inventory off of the supplier's hands and they are happy to part with it more quickly than less quickly. Okay, okay let's take a look at the next part here. It says state one benefit of the cash discount to Geordie Parks on 12th of December. So the benefit to Jody, Jody sorry, I, I, I'm saying Jody, it's Jody. The benefit to Jody Parks is that it allows Jody to pay less money and hence to save more money. That's about it. Uh, so yeah, so it was only one mark, so you don't have to go too complicated. Again, if you guys have different opinions, different articulations of the answers to these questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, we could share knowledge and grow together. Okay, let's take a look at the last part of this question. All right, so what does it say here? It says the following is a statement of financial position for the year ended 31st December 2021. It was prepared by an accounting student who was an intern at Jardy Parks and contained several errors. Mm, okay, so Jardy Parks statement of financial position as at 31st December 2021. All right, so I'm seeing costs, provision for depreciation, network value, okay, assets, right. So motor vehicles, I'm seeing 100,000 here. I'm seeing 25 and I'm seeing 125. So that means they added the cost and the depreciation, right? So don't do that. You're supposed to subtract depreciation. Then we have office equipment, 92 minus 35 to, okay, that seems legit. Bank overdraft, bank overdraft is not an asset. That's a liability. Inventory is an asset. Account receivable is an asset. Drawings is not an asset. Okay, that's supposed to be a reduction to capital. So we have to, of course, fix that. Liabilities and capital. So mortgage is a liability, a non-current liability. Accounts payable is a current liability. Capital, opening capital, okay, and net loss. Right, so I'm not sure about the arithmetic here, but I know you're supposed to subtract net loss because a net loss means you're going to lose some capital. So, and as we could also see, the total assets is not equal to the liabilities and capital. So we have some stuff to fix here. So let's pull up a balance sheet on this side. So please don't forget to head it up. So what we're going to start with is the non-current assets, right? So we have the motor vehicles, the 100 minus the 25 is 75, and the office equipment, 92 minus 35 to 56, 8. So we're going to put totals for each of those columns, and then we're going to start with the current assets. Now, we only had a couple of current assets, the inventory and the account receivable totaling 77,700. Now, it did say to show 
your working capital. As a matter of fact, let me pull that up so I could show you where it said that, right? So it says it right here, right? So use the vertical style of presentation and show the working capital. So working capital or net working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So we're going to go back to our balance sheet and continue with current liabilities. Now I'm only seeing two. We have the bank overdraft and the accounts payable. That's going to give us 26880 which is subtracted from the 77700 to give us 50820 we then add that to the 1318 for the non current assets above to get 182,620. Now, I like to continue and finish off with my non current liabilities, but of course, some people prefer to put that in the capital section. Again, arithmetically, it makes no difference. So, the non current liabilities, we only have one, which is the mortgage of 75,908. And when we subtract that from the 182,620, we're going to get a figure of 106,712. Now, capital section so then that's and so by the way that's that's what you call your net assets right the total assets minus total liabilities and that has to be financed by capital so the opening balance as it says across there's 136610 it does say that we made a net loss of 10009 which needs to be subtracted because losses reduce capital which of course is the opposite of profit which would increase capital and we also have drawings of 18998 which has to be subtracted because drawings is a reduction in capital and that's going to give us 106712 the balance of capital at end which matches with the balance of net assets okay guys so there you have it that's the solution for question four from the jan 2022 pua paper two if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i'll get back to you when i can if you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to check out my website that has some free pay with handouts you might find useful. As per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.